Hi and welcome to this pre-recorded Monday Live. I'm in the New Forest in Parsford House Hotel, hopefully having a lovely time. I come back on Tuesday, so um, those of you on the site can see me playing teams on Wednesday as usual and I'll be on there on Friday talking defence. Second hand plays low is our theme for Fridays at the moment and looking at the various nuances of that. Of course, on the site itself, we are still in Greedober. October is the month that we have renamed Greedober after the tactics at duplicate pairs. That's the normal game we play. And we'll be looking at some of those tactics today, <clears throat> particularly again, choosing the right part score and how that affects us. What else have we got? Well, we've got the usual five level decision. Um, which uh, we'll try and get half of right as usual. Um, and then the bidding quiz at the end, of course. And then at the very end, we have our beginner section. And we have just started looking at the very basics of declarer play. We've looked at it before. We've looked at various bits of play, but we're going to plod along through a bit of basic declarer play. So what have we got to think about? Um, well, just a reminder that everything else is normal other than other than today. So uh, please remember that. And a reminder also that the members can play free of charge on Into Bridge. So we still have our regular Monday game, not getting that many people at it. But if you do fancy a game in that, don't forget it's free of charge. And I do recommend that you, you use your camera and your microphone. It's good fun and you can get to know and see people. Uh, and, and generally enjoy it. It's completely free both to sign up and to enjoy. And I know a number of you have, have got more used to it now and are quite enjoying their ranked games, as it were, where you where you get your ranking going up and down. <clears throat> so have a go, go at those if you've not done those before. Quick little mention about the holidays. Um, obviously, I'm on Passford House at the moment. Uh, I go to Denham quite a lot at the end of the month. I'm at Denham talking about minors. I'm, um, I'm at Passford House now. Leslie Lewis is going there later in December for an improvers event. So go there if you fancy it. And we're at the Old Barn. I'm at the Old Barn in November. And uh, Dennis and Pearl are also there, as you can see, in December. So a variety of events. Don't forget there's Christmas coming up as well. Christmas and New Year where we offer denim and also a New Year event at the Old Barn. So a nice variety there. Let's get ourselves to a five level decision, I think. Those of you on Friday would have been with me then and we would have seen uh, this auction. So you are non-vulnerable against non-vulnerable. You are east and you overcall one spade. That's what you choose to do. You could, I suppose, have done a Michael's bid. Um, would have made a huge amount of difference to the auction in a way because it wouldn't have been a specific bid. But there you go. Look how fast the auction's gone. So you've chosen to overcall a spade rather than Michael's. I don't mind, actually, if you play Michael's, two hearts showing spades in another then it is a perfectly reasonable option. But you've chosen one spade. It's then gone four hearts, four spades, five hearts. Like a lot of these auctions do, they accelerate. We saw the auction last week, if you remember, where it went up to four spades and we had to decide. Well, now we've got the decision at the five level. So what do you think about that? Have a little think and we will come back to that later. Um, I've been thinking about the events that we do abroad as well um, and Tunisia we are focusing on this year. Um, we're doing a number of other events, of course, Mallorca and Croatia as well. Um, Lynn is there in November and I am there in March, April time. Hopefully with my family, our family affair as it were, but it should be fun. There for two weeks. Um, and also going to Iceland as well in the summer holidays. Um, so some lovely events. Remember, you can see all of this on the BNB Holidays website. Um, but I do recommend uh, joining me in Tunisia. I've been there uh, on and off for over 22 years. Um, did 15 years in a row, if I remember. And um, yeah, some good times. All right. Um, I think it is time for Greed Over to appear. So let's see where we are. So here we are. 
I've got to put the seminar on though, that's what I've got to remember. So when I could be touching the seminar on the screen. So parts called greed, parts called greed. Again, what I'm going to do is show you a couple of travelers to get ourselves going, the same travelers as we've seen, and then we'll launch into it. And the general idea is, should you, when you're at the parts score level, aiming to make a parts score, we've got to compare the scores of no trumps and suits, 120s, 110s, 90s, 130s, 140s. There's all sorts of scores, including 150. OK, so it's so important. Every 10 points counts, and that's the key. So let me just put a traveler up, the same traveler as we've seen before. I just want you to see the comparisons. Don't worry too much about it. It's just looking at 140 is the top, 130, 120, 110. And you can see every 10 points counts. So the 140 on this traveler gets you 16 match points, the top. 110, just 30 away, gets you below average. The average would be eight if the max is 16. So that's crazy, isn't it? So again, you're seeing both the choice of part score and the number of tricks you make. So usually a better minor fit will do well, but you've got to make over tricks. One less trick in spades gets you more points. No trumps, often the most risky. I've shown you two no trumps going down there. But if two no trumps scrapes home, then eight tricks gets you a good score because it beats anybody else making eight tricks in another contract. Because, of course, no trumps are the most valuable. Let's put up another one. This one's even tighter. This is crazy. So you've got 120 getting you the top score, 90 the bottom. So there's two, two, two pairs on 90. They are two clubs and one no trumpy. Interesting. So eight tricks in a minor are exactly equal to seven tricks in a no trump contract. And again, obviously, you're seeing the over tricks and how valuable they are. If you're going to play in a minor suit, if you choose to be in that minor, you have to go for broke. And particularly when you're playing it, over tricks are going to be important. So when you play in a minor or no trumps for the matter, you're comparing against the other contracts. And that's the crucial. OK, you're comparing against the other contracts. So if you think, well, I could have been in two spades here, then you really do have to strive for the extra trick in the minors. Because otherwise, as you can see at table three there, it's a disaster. Whereas at least at table one and two, you've got an average score. OK. All right. If you, you, you know, if you've got a better fit, you've got to make the most. OK, well, we've seen those a number of times. We've looked at a number of common situations. What I want to look at today is this one. So it's going to go one heart, one spade, one no trump. OK. And then it's going to be your bid. Now, so there's a one spade over call here. Your partner's bid a no trump. And then we've got to decide what to do. Are we going to play a no trump? Or are we going to play in the suit? And of course, the crucial element is what do you expect for the one no trump bid? How many stoppers? That's up to you. Um, and so we're going to decide and we're going to use very much the same factors throughout. The difference between no trumps and suit contract is very, very similar. We're using judgment. OK, aces and kings are generally better for suit contracts, queens and jacks for no trumps, because aces and kings allow you to win and then you can rough the rest. Whereas queens and jacks, by the time you make them, may well be roughed away, particularly when you're not in big trump fits, for example. OK, um, so bear that in mind. Your short suits, are they weak or are they strong? What do I mean by that? Well, if you've got a small doubleton, you're going to need uh, and quite a bit of help in that to stop the suit. But not only that, you may well gain by roughing. Whereas if you have a queen jack doubleton, yes, it can be dropped underneath the ace and king. But if your partner's got the 10 to three, suddenly you've got a stopper. Or if he's got 10, nine to four, you don't need any roughing anymore in that doubleton. Can you see that? They take their ace and king in both contracts and you don't need a rough because your partner happens to have the 10-9. So it's not unreasonable to think that if partner's got a bit of length in the suit and you've got two high cards, that if partner's got another one, suddenly roughing in your hand with the doubleton is not going to gain so much. So the stronger the doubleton, again, the more often we're going to think of no trumps. OK, so let's look at an example hand here. You can imagine what the auction's going to go. It's one heart from you 
one spade over call from north, one no trump from your partner, and it goes pass, and it is your bid. Okay, what we've got to do is decide what we think partner's got. Um, and the first thing is we, we, he doesn't need to have any more than one stopper. That's the first thing. Okay, for a, a one no trump with 708 points and the ace of spades, for example, and nothing else, he could bid one no trump. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. Um, we'd expect him to have six to nine points. I don't think there's much more than that. If in doubt, I tend to bid a second suit in these auctions, but I'm going to look at the texture here. The other thing I will mention is very often I won't expect partner to have three card heart support because quite often in competitive auctions, I like him to support. However, if he was 4 3 3 3 with a, a good spade stopper, he may well still bid one no trump. However, I'm looking at aces and ace king jack. Okay, yes, I've got a jack there, but that's in the suit. So your suit is sh your main suit is strong and your second suit has a bare ace in. You've got two weak doubletons, so you've got nothing to help your partner's spade stopper. Notice also you'd expect in this auction a large proportion of the time for your partner to have four spades. Can you see why? South has not supported one spade. Now, of course, North might have six of them, but if South has three, he will often bid two spades. It is a good bid. It competes for the auction and makes our life very difficult. So I'd expect South to have a doubleton. Therefore, partner will often have four spades. But here for me, aces, kings, bare doubletons, I'm bidding two diamonds. A lot of the time I'll finish in two hearts with a 5-2 fit, I'm happy to be there. I think in the long run, I'm going to do better in two hearts. I hope you're happy with that. Okay, so let's look at the layout. Well, partner's got a very good spade stopper indeed, but that doesn't necessarily help us that much in no trumps. Okay, so let's have a look. I think you're going to make two hearts plus one probably here because you've got a bit more control of the hand. Uh, the issue you've got in no trumps is I think you're going to lose one heart trick. I don't know if you can see that, but if you lead the ten of hearts from the east hand, south should cover that with the queen and his nine of hearts will be a winner eventually. OK, so they should make one heart trick. And of course, that will go together with four club tricks against a no trump contract. That's what's interesting here. So although the little doubleton in spades is clearly fine because it's opposite the ace queen of spades, if they find clubs to lead and they'll see dummy, don't forget, or so they will work out what's in dummy's hand quick enough, it shouldn't be difficult for north to switch to clubs at some point. OK, so let's say they lead a spade when north gets the lead or south gets the lead. They should be at a single signal to each other. OK, partner, let's play clubs. And as long as they do, they might not. And that's what's crucial here. If they do switch, I'm um, sorry, if they do switch to clubs, they'll make the a heart trick and four club tricks. If they don't, of course, one no trump cups on top. So I think, you know, for the most part, two hearts is going to be the winner here. OK, you're going to lose one heart trick, a couple of club tricks and probably a diamond trick. OK, um, but in the long run, you're going to end up making more tricks in hearts than you will in no trumps. OK, now, as I say, if they never switch to clubs, you may well make the same number um, making um, eight tricks. To, I mean, how are you expecting to make nine tricks, do you think? Believe it or not, in hearts, you've got to be greedy. You've got to be greedy. How do you think you can be greedy in a heart contract? Well, the ideal scenario is you make as many trumps as possible. Um, and so what you would try and do uh, is maybe rough a diamond in dummy, believe it or not. OK, and you might be able to achieve that by playing the ace and king of diamonds in a third round of diamonds. Um, South can't. Uh, easily switch to hearts. I mean, North might find a heart lead, I suppose, um, which might allow them to stop 
you roughing, as it were. Um, but that uh, I don't think everybody's going to find that. Um, but you can still do it if they if they lead a heart. You might find yourself able to try and rough a couple of spades and make five heart tricks in the West Hands. You've got various ways of aiming to make more tricks. Um, can you see that? Because it's a trump suit. So I think you could, for example, believe it or not, you could win the ace, king of diamonds. Sorry, king, ace of diamonds, play a spade finesse, take the ace of spades, rough a spade, and eventually, hopefully, you end up making um, five heart tricks by, you'd use the king of diamonds for another spade rough, as it were, and eventually give, give away the lead and your ace, king, jack of hearts would make at the end of the hand. That sounds a bit complicated, but essentially you can do it because you can, by leading spades from the east hand, there's nothing that south can do. South can rough in front of you, but that obviously will help you in, in, the, in the end of the hand. So not always easy to make the extra tricks, but I think two hearts is going to be the winner there. Now, again, I admit that I make a large contrast between the two hands, but I'm trying to make my life easier. OK, so look at these these hands here again, the same auction, one heart, one spade, one low trump pass. And it's your bid. I've given you the same kind of hand, 12 point hands. You've got a five, four hand. As I say, generally, I'm going to lean lean towards bidding two diamonds here. But at the same time, I'm looking at the jack of spades here, which could be of some power. That may well add to my partner's. I remember I'm putting my partner with maybe four spades. If partner's got ace 10 to four or ace queen to four, that jack could be very valuable. OK, king jack of clubs. If my partner's got anything in clubs at all, that king jack, king jack is valuable and I may well not need to stop the suit. Now, clearly, you know, it'll be against the same hand as you've just seen. Four to the ten opposite too small was a disaster. They could take four club tricks here. Four to the ten opposite king jack doubleton. Huge difference. OK, so let's I'm going to choose to pass here. Now, it's not always going to be right, but you're doing it for the right reasons. I've given your partner the same hand here. And here you can see that things are very different. And in fact, your jack of spades really does enhance your partner's holding, because I think the eight of spades could become important. OK, you might might or might not be able to develop a trick with it. Uh, but more importantly, your diamonds are looking, you know, developable, the hearts are interesting, but your clubs are valuable. So, uh, you know, if they lead clubs, your 10 of clubs will make. It's not clear where you make any extra tricks. Now, you might make more tricks in hearts, but at the same time, if your opponents have to attack all the different suits, you might find that if they keep leading suits, it's not an easy defense here. OK. If they lead a spade, maybe you put the jack, king and ace on. If they lead another spade, they might develop your spades for you. What does South do instead? Um, eventually, maybe they switch to clubs. It's tricky. OK, it is tricky. But I think probably in the long run, two hearts is probably going to make. Well, you can see the hearts are quite nasty. Um, but I think you may well make the same number of tricks. You might do better. You might actually make more in no trumps. So it can work both ways. But I can see no particular reason why you're going to make more tricks in hearts than no trumps. And the reason being is that you don't really need to stop suits. OK, it, as such, they might establish a club trick eventually, but they could easily go very, very wrong. Um, and these are the kind hands are really tricky to defend because once, you know, um, you start with a ten of hearts or something, you know, leading the ten of hearts, South has to decide what to do. But I think you'll probably make the same number of tricks. And the key is, is just I'm hoping you can see how valuable the king jack of spades are and the jack of, sorry, the king jack of clubs and the jack of spades are. And, and you know, they're not always going to be the case. West could have had, sorry, East could have had five, four, two of clubs. The king jack fall underneath the ace queen and, and you look a bit silly. OK, but in the long run, 
you're, what you're trying to do is evaluate your hand in the light of the auction. And if you've got strong doubletons here, King Jack, and Jack doubletons pretty strong in the light of your partner holding a stopper. For instance, sometimes his stopper will be keep queen 10 to four or, or queen to four or something like that. And suddenly the jack makes it a lot more because remember, if you're sitting over the one spade bidder, you would regard queen to four or something like that as a reasonable stopper. And if it's queen nine to four, the jack suddenly makes it into the, the potential of two tricks. Okay, so uh, as I say, I had a feeling I let, I, let, I let the computer play it and one no trump came in plus two. It, defense is awesomely difficult and I think this one's a pretty tricky one to defend. Um, so I have a feeling that um, you'll do better in um, no trumps and hearts. Now this hand was sent in from Ken. I usually leave these till the end, but it was on the same theme. So I thought, why not? I thought this was a fantastic example hand. And what's important is that it is going to show us that both players on either side of the table need to be thinking about the part score. So here you open a diamond. I like it. I know your doubletons are strong here, but for me it's it's looking like a diamond bid every time and I can rebid two clubs if I want to. So I open a diamond, slightly different auction, but only slightly because it goes one spade, one no trump, pass. And it's your bid. So it's really interesting. I think it's a perfect example and, and we've got to decide what to do. And every single bone in my body is leaning towards passing one no trump. OK, and the good news is Ken was with me because Ken had uh, listened to the set big seminar and thought, yep, I'm going to do it as well. Lo and behold, of course, he got a really bad score for passing it out. However, we're going to see why he got a bad score and it was not his fault. Now, I've got to say, I'm not sure which position Ken was in here, but but whoever that was holding this hand was the person who was hard done by. And the reason is, is because, well, let's have a look. OK, so I would pass here because I've got strong doubletons, lots of sort of queens, jacks and tens. I know that you've got an ace and a king there, but those tens as well, it all looks like a no trumpy hand to me. However, look at what we see at the actual table. Now, what's intriguing, I should say north, south or vulnerable. What's intriguing here, and I will also say that I rotated for convenience because uh, it was um, uh, east, west and north, south or the other way around. Now, what's interesting here is that Actually, whether one no trump going down gets you a bad score is another matter here. OK, but we'll, we'll see that later. But I think the most important thing here is to analyse East's bidding. So you can see that what happened uh, was you finished in one no trump by East and they led a heart. Um, and so that was a disaster because it went to the queen and king, knocked out the ace and suddenly they had obviously five heart tricks and plenty of other tricks in, in the wash as it were. So it was pretty ugly for um, East West. However, I hope you can see that when the bidding goes one diamond, one spade, I'm not going to bid the same as East. Look at East's hand. Yes, East has a spade stopper and East does indeed have eight points. So in a way, one no trump is passable. You don't have to have a length in hearts. But everything about East's hand there surely is screaming suit contract. You have a singleton, you have aces, uh, and you have no quick trick in, in spades. So everything is saying to me, I want to play in a suit contract. One no trump does not say that. One no trump says I'm quite happy playing in no trumps. So I'm not going to bid one no trump with the east hand. I don't mind what you do. You could bid two diamonds, I suppose. I quite like pass. And the reason I quite like pass is because I don't mind playing in spades. If everybody passes it out, it's not the end of the world. But the point is it allows partner to bid if she, if she wants to. So uh, I don't mind what you choose. I would probably choose pass, as I say, but I don't mind two diamonds either supporting. It's just that not so keen on three card supporting minors, but, it, but, it, but it's fine here. It then goes pass, pass, and then of course it goes two clubs. Now, how the auction continues after that's another matter. Because of course the irony here is that they're gonna, they may well find their heart fit. Now North probably shouldn't bid two hearts. 
but might do. And if it goes past pass, I think south can bid two hearts anyway. So if north passed, east's correct bid would probably be three clubs here. And now you might keep them out of their heart fit. But if north bids two hearts here, the interesting thing is, is that you might, one no trump going a couple off, <laughs> uh, might be better than uh, the opponents finding their heart fit. Um, because um, they do pretty well in hearts, I think. Um, they're certainly going to, they might make 140. Uh, so, I mean, if you're in one no trump and went three off, that wouldn't be good. But um, yeah, they're going to do pretty well. Um, if you play, you might be able to get rid of your diamond by leading clubs is, is the thing. I think uh, best play you if you lead clubs. Um, clearly, if north, if east, west lead diamonds, they give you a trick. Or uh, if you guess correctly, I should say, if you, get, you, gain, you gain a trick. But if, you, if you've got enough time, you can establish your queen, one of your queen jack of clubs, and that would allow you to um, discard a diamond. Or, for that matter, you could play uh, the ace, king of spades, see the queen jack drop after trumps are drawn and maybe establish the nine of clubs from a roughing finesse. Uh, sorry, nine of spades through a roughing finesse. So there are ways of possibly um, making three hearts for 140, but even 110 is better than one no trump minus two. So it's intriguing, but I think you might, you might manage to um, get to three clubs uh, here. How are you doing three clubs? Um, again, probably making three clubs but you you wouldn't make any more um what's interesting is if you can make three clubs um and then four clubs is okay because four clubs minus one is better than one no trump minus two and better than three hearts making anyway there's a lot of nuances but i thought <coughs> excuse me i thought really interesting hand because west was absolutely correct to pass one no trump from East, but I don't think East was correct to bid one no Trump. And it, and what it requires is both partnership thinking the same thing. So yes, obviously one of you is going to have aces and the other one might have other things. But when one of you here East is so precisely looking like a suit contract, you've got to take control as it were. Okay, well, I will come back to you here. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was looking at a slightly more competitive element of the choosing the correct part score. Notice it required there not to be spade support in the south out, which, you know, which is an important nuance because really one spade, if my partner over calls a spade, if I've got three card support, I'm going to bid two spades because you can see it completely crushes east west little chat about what's the best part score does that make sense so make sure you're getting in there okay well what comes next i think we are going here so let's go there so what did you think i think the five level decision remember we've overcalled a spade um it's got one heart one spade four hearts four spades five hearts. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference if you'd bid two hearts in the auction, four hearts, four spade, five hearts. It's just slightly more clear cut your decision. Uh, for me, playing pairs particularly, this is a pass because I just don't know. And if you don't know, in the long run, you'll do better to leave them because they've probably guessed. And quite often the expression experts like to use is make, do not make the last guess. So make your opponents take the last guess. So a lot of the time here, North will have guessed that five hearts was the right thing to bid. Does that make sense? Okay, so what I'm thinking is, well, I'm not going to guess. Now, playing teams, it's always tricky because it's a, you're not, the, the, the odd 10 points is, is not so important in teams. So if five hearts is going one off and you bid five spades and go one off and nobody doubles, let's say, that's only a difference of 50 and 50, 100 points. So you're only really losing three imps. Whereas at playing, playing pairs, getting, you know, going off is going to get you a really bad score because you should have been taking five hearts off. OK, so, it, you know, it's only, only three imps playing teams, whereas playing pairs, it's, it's a top and a bottom kind of scenario. So for me here, it's a pass. Partner, I'm sorry, 
um, but I, I just don't know what to do now. My partner then has chosen to double that. That's his decision. OK, so let's see if it, my partner's right. Let's see. Well, yeah, my partner's got two aces, so I completely understand that I made a, a, an overcall. I could have been worse, but my partner is judging on the law of averages, I suppose. And maybe he feels that if I had king, queen, jack to six and nothing else or something that I might have bid five spades. Or perhaps if I didn't have the ace of clubs, I might have bid five spades, thinking I know five hearts is making, but still a bit whiskey. Here you can see there's three aces off the top. Only three aces, though. So five hearts is perfectly reasonable, and it's a good sacrifice if we can make four spades. Um, let's have a look. Who thinks we can make four spades? I think we probably can, can't we? We're losing one club, one diamond, and one heart. So well done, North, and well done, West, and well done, East. Uh, so our pass is brilliant, I think. Uh, double, I don't think, is right, because you don't know. You need your partner to have the aces. He's the one who knows. And um, and, he, and West has got an extra 50 points. And playing pairs, of course, that's really valuable. You've got 100 instead of 50. Um, so, and as you can see, uh, our five spades is, is surely going to go off most of the time. Uh, the King of Hearts will be led, and then they'll see the singletons. So they'll switch to the Queen of Diamonds, I would have thought. And they will certainly make at least one club, one diamond, and one heart trick there. OK, so uh, another five level decisions. And the most common thing is when the opponents bid to the five level, you've got to have a really outstanding reason. Interestingly, a double fit is usually enough here. If partner had had the queen of clubs instead of the nine of clubs, so if partner had a decent club suit, then we could have had 11 tricks from the club finesse because you'd have expected North to have most of the points. And so perhaps you'd expect the club finesse to work and five spades would have been worth it. We're going to change the vulnerabilities a little bit in the coming weeks. Uh, generally, I've been giving you non-vulnerable against non-vulnerable. As the vulnerability changes, of course, then we are going to see that you've got more leeway for bidding this way or that. OK, just a quick reminder what's going on on the site then. I'm here normally for the rest of the week. So Wednesday teams and Friday, we're doing defence against second hand low. Uh, tonight, uh, if you fancy it, you've got the Into Bridge game, free game for the club members on the Into Bridge site. And that's nice and easy to play. So do enjoy that if you play and do give me feedback. I'm really keen to know. I am planning to try and change things as we go. And as you give me feedback, I can only do as you tell me, as it were. But for now, that's me. I'll show you the bidding quiz. So let me just pick that up for you. A slight change of theme, but not only slight. OK, and then I'll go to the beginner. So here you've opened a club. OK, you've opened a club. It goes past one heart from your partner to diamond overcall. OK, so a club from you pass one heart two diamond overcall. Nobody's vulnerable and you've got to decide on your bid. OK, you can find the answer out on both the, well, on the site, whether you're a member or not. And don't forget, if you're interested in membership, come to the site. And if you're interested in holidays, go and find those holidays. OK, I will see you again soon. Look forward to it. For now, I'm going to go and have a look at some Declarer play for beginners and novices. So here we are. Uh, we are on our declarer play. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Um, we looked at leading the high cards from the shorter holding last time. That is when we had a solid sequence of high cards. Ace, king, queen, jack. Ace, king, queen. King, queen, jack, ten. What happens when you have only a few high cards? What happens there? OK, so look at these different suits. Nothing like the ones I showed you last week, are they? OK, here you're looking at suits that require another tactic. OK, I've actually deliberately given you the same length of suit in each hand so that we don't get confused between the two. So remember last time we had four opposite three and three opposite two. This time you have exactly the same length in both. So we're going to have to make our decision for another reason. 
Now, again, we are not planning the whole plan. We're going to play a no Trump contract, but I do not want to plan the whole contract. I'm looking at individual suits. And the reason I do that on a hand like this is so that using the declare a place, the begin software, begin bridge software, you will be able to practice this. So this is hand 17 from begin bridge. Uh, and that is the software on the site. It's free. You can, you can actually buy it, but for 4 dollars you can be a member of the Bernie McGee bridge beginners group, and you're able to use begin software free. Okay. And that is a software that has hundreds of hands for you to practice, but takes you through the whole of the beginning and learning process of bridge. So I do recommend having a go. OK, so let's look at the hand. The jack of clubs is led, as you can see from the top, it appeared. And I want you to understand that you're going to lead spades. I'm telling you to lead spades next. Now, given that I am ordering you to lead spades, I want you to choose which high card in clubs you're going to use on the first one, because you could actually win, for example, the ace of clubs here, or you could win the king of clubs. Well, you could win the queen as well. That's by the by. If you won the ace of clubs, you would have to lead from the hand on your left, west. If you win the king of clubs, you, you would need to lead from the hand on the right. So bearing in mind, I want you to lead spades next. Which card do you think I want you to win? OK, so you can choose where. So how do you think you want to lead spades? And this is tricky because intuitively you might think it doesn't matter. But there is a simple rule, OK, which is number two on our list. We had number one. We like to play the high cards from the shorter hand to allow a suit to run smoothly. However, the most important tactic is this number two. OK, it is generally best to lead low towards your high cards. What do I mean by that? Well, if you lead a low card, your opponents are next to play and they might play a high one. And of course, I mean, take spades. Let's say we lead the four of spades. If South plays the ace, we're next to play. We don't have to waste one of our high ones. Can you see? It would go four, ace, three. Wonderful. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to lead from the east hand. So I am going to deliberately win with the king of clubs because I've made a plan that I'm going to lead spades first. I'm not saying that's a full plan, but that's the plan I want you to make. So I'm going to win the king of clubs. OK, and then I'm going to focus on the spade suit. So let's go to the spade suit. I'm going to lead the four. And if South plays the ace, it's magic news because I can play the three and I will have two winners. But there's something even better than that, because it's actually the case that if South has the ace, I'm not sure there's anything he can do. If he plays the ace, we can play the three. But if he doesn't play the ace, we can play a high one and he can't play it anymore. Now, as you will find in bridge, this is what we call a 50-50 shot, because of course North might have the ace of spades. And if he does, he will kill our queen, our king. But when North plays a small one, who do you think does have the ace? And you're quite right. I think it's South. So our king has made a trick. OK. Do you see what I mean? OK, so we think South has the ace. Anyway, we've played our first spade. I want you to play diamonds now. Now, what would you like to do? Would you like to play them from the west hand on your left or from the east hand on your right or from declare or dummy? We want to lead towards the queen jack. So let's do it. OK. If we lead spades here, it's a disaster again. Let's let's think about that. That's a good point. If you lead the queen of spades, that's no good. They can just take the race and kill it. And if you lead the three of spades, can you see that they'll just be at a win? I mean, that's we can't. We've got nothing in dummy. Well, we've got the seven, but they'll be at a win with the eight or the nine. So that's no good. We've decided we want to lead a low card towards our high cards. 
Understanding this is so important. It will come up on 90% of the hands you play. It includes the idea of finessing, if you've come across that. Finessing and leading up to high cards go hand in hand. Leading low is such a powerful thing. So I'm going to lead a diamond now that I'm in the West hand. OK, so let's do it. So let's concentrate on this suit. Let's lead a diamond. Ah, now that hasn't worked so well. The jack has lost to the king. However, not all is lost. Because perhaps later in the play, we might be able to lead another diamond. And we'll see what happens then. OK. So the opponents win and they lead a club back. So we have to win that in the west hand. OK, so we do. Now I'm going to lead another diamond. Let's see what happens. OK. I hope you're happy that we're continuing with diamonds. We've already decided that spades are the wrong thing to lead from the west hand. OK, so let's do it. Now, I'm going to have to ask, this is the problem playing bridge. You've got to remember what's gone. Do you know what's gone? Can you remember that first diamond? the jack and the king and I'm afraid to say it is part of bridge okay you do have to remember things like that now of course I'm distracting you by by moving my hands and doing all sorts but yeah you've got to remember that the jack and king have gone so we're going to lead another one now of course I think we'd be quite unlucky if south had both the ace and the king he's already had the king so let's hope it's north that has the ace and north does have the ace isn't that fantastic okay now Notice the ace has not killed one of our high cards. Because we keep leading low towards our high cards, we are giving our high cards power. The power to duck when the opponent plays high. Can you see? So here north probably doesn't have any more diamonds or maybe has one more, but he's played the ace so we have been able to play low. Now, I'm going to test you even further now. How many diamonds are left? OK, well, two rounds have gone. So that is eight. So there is only one diamond left. Are you happy with that? Eight diamonds have gone. You can see four. Still, that's 12. So there's only one left. Is it higher or lower than your queen? Is it higher or lower than the queen? And of course, the answer is lower. We've seen the ace and king annoyingly take two tricks, but we have established the queen of diamonds and the seven of diamonds by leading towards them. OK, so they're going to lead another club. And we are going to take those diamonds. Are you happy with that? Because we do not want to lead spades from de Clara's hand. Are you happy with that? We've already decided we don't want to lead spades from the West Ham. We want to lead towards the Queen. OK, understanding the term towards is important. That means leading from the other hand up towards that Queen. So now we, we think the diamonds are winners. Let's hope we're proven true. And of course it is. The ten of diamonds is the last one. And the seven will be a winner. Nobody can beat it. Remember, it's no trumps. So your opponents are discarding. We're now going to lead a spade. OK. Because we're now on the east hand and we lead a small one towards the queen. However, which I, I need you to tell me which high cards have gone and there's only one, I hope. Are you happy with that? The ace has not gone. We led towards the king. And that's the only one gone. So we're going to lead another one. But we think South has the ace, and if South hasn't played it, that queen is surely going to win. Yes. OK, so we have made two tricks with that king and queen. We did not use one of them to knock out the ace. Look at the holding there. It looks like your opponents have stronger spades than you. In a way, they do. If we lead the king and knock out the ace, the opponents can just lose one spade trick. They'll make three tricks themselves by leading towards your hike. What can South do? At any point, if he played the ace, we could have followed with the three. 
and we, our king and queen would still make. Can you see that? There's nothing that South can do. It's nasty. But if we did lead from West Ham, of course, look what happens. If you lead the king, well then, South just wins the ace. And now you've only got one high card left. You've wasted the high card. Leading up towards your high cards gives them strength. And we've seen we managed to make both the king and the queen by doing that. If you lead the king, it's no good. Now, if you have the king, queen, jack, ten, nine, eight, seven, of course you can lead the king. You don't mind giving it away. But if you've only got the king and queen, you can't afford necessarily to give it away. OK. And again, in diamonds, as you can see, if you do the wrong thing in diamonds, if you let them kill your jack of diamonds, well, the defenders can win the ace and then the king can kill the queen. OK. They had the ace in the north hand, the king in the south hand. The ace of diamonds could not kill our queen and jack because we led towards them. But if we lead the jack, as you've just seen, now they can actually make the king and ten now. Can you see that? If you play the queen, the king kills it. If you play a small one, the ten would win. There you go. And both of your honours would be killed and that ten would be a loser. It's really tricky looking at this hand, looking at each suit, but understanding that leading towards your high cards is such a powerful tactic. OK, so if you can get better at it, it'll change everything. Now, for some of you who are natural card players, you're thinking, what on earth is he telling them this for? Isn't it obvious? It is to a natural card player. But to some of us who are not natural card players, it requires drumming in. Low towards high. Low towards high. OK. Finally, you can try playing the heart suit. I'll leave that one for you to have a little think about to see how you might play the heart suit at the very end of this hand. OK, but I think we've covered enough today. That is a lot. OK, remember, you can practice that on the site. OK, the begin software is there. This hand is there and you can go through the playthrough aspect where I talk through each hand. And I do that over a number of hands, all of these basic hands. And then eventually what happens is you get the chance to just practice some hands yourself and usually have me saying wonderful things to you. Because, of course, I talk to you on the software, believe it or not. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Sorry if I overran a bit. I'll be back soon. I'm back next week on the Monday and back throughout this week for those of you who fancy that. So thanks for your company and see you again soon.